Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Nick. Today I'm building this, I don't even know what to call it. We'll call it a hobby metal tubing holder. If you want to see how I build it, stick around. This essentially was going to start out kind of as, I don't know, I guess you'd call it a scrap wood project. I took some uh, half inch MDF I had laying around on the bandsaw and ripped it to width. Then I just cut it in half and then I could line up both pieces marked to my final length and cut both at once ensuring that they're the same. Uh, yeah, I guess you could do this on the table saw, but mine was a little preoccupied at the time. Hey, don't judge. After clearing off a uh, little spot here on the workbench, then it was just on to kind of marking and laying everything out. Uh, one piece was going to get through holes, one was going to get non-through holes. So I actually didn't want to gang them up. Uh, I'll show that in a little bit that I, I kind of used different tooling to make the holes. Uh, but it was just mark everything out. I had two rows of five that I was going to put pipes in. And uh, yeah, it, once you have everything laid out. Then I just came back with this automatic center punch. And this is kind of nice because you don't need a hammer. It's spring loaded. And uh, it gives a, a spot for any, you know, bit or, you know, the pilot point. Or in my case, I'm going to use a Forstner bit. And that point finds that exact marking. So it, it works out pretty slick. Being I was using PVC, uh, PVC is not necessarily the outside diameter isn't always exact. And you kind of run into different scenarios. So I was going to use a circle cutter to cut the hole so that way I could get the exact diameter. It's basically got this little arm with a cutter on it and you can adjust that to whatever radii of you know the size circle that you want to cut and then lock it down with the set screw. One thing worth noting on these circle cutters or machinists you know refer to this kind of process as fly cutting but uh, it's offset so don't think that you can have the the cutter on one side and then hold a work piece down with your hand and then because when you go to turn it on it's going to swing around it's going to bite you and, and that's just no bueno. So then it was just line up the pilot bit, and, and this particular bit you really just want to use on a drill press, but it was line up that pilot bit with those punches that uh, I did with that center punch. And also, MDF's not good stuff to breathe in, um, so I kind of tried to rest my dust collection hose here, I guess. I don't know, probably another project, make an articulating arm for my dust collection hose, but we'll have to save that for another day. One thing about these offcuts when I was cutting these, uh, they, I don't know, they, whatever reason, they screamed to me that they were train wheels. So if somebody were to make wooden model trains or even like a model train set, I think these would be absolutely perfect to use for that. It just, I don't know, I just saw them and I'm like, hey, these would be, you know, I, I didn't keep them. So, you know, don't judge me on that. You know, I, I did actually get rid of them, but I didn't want to. <laughs> Either way. And here's a shot of uh, showing how I had the camera set up to record the drill press. Normally I don't include any of the, the camera shot or videography stuff because it, you know, it's more about the woodworking to me. But this was a prime example because I'm hanging it from my wood dowel organizer, which is just a chunk of PVC pipe. And that's already getting full. I'll have to address that another day. But um, yeah, that's what I hung it from. And, and that's all my full length and my larger diameter wooden dowels. This project was meant because I... I was putting these small pipes inside that one and they were getting shoved to the back and lost and that's kind of what got my wheels going on this project altogether. Just a spot to store all my little odds and ends, my little short pieces of you know metal tubing and extrusions and profiles and whatnot. Uh, I then switched over to a Forstner bit. This Forstner bit was just slightly smaller than the outside diameter of the PVC. And then I was able to set my depth stop here so I didn't go all the way through the MDF. And this was going to basically hog away and get rid of the material in the center. Those circle cutters are very nice in being accurate, but they produce a plug rather than, you know, getting a, you know making the center part all into shavings. So I needed to kind of get rid of that material first because I was going to be insetting those PVC pipes into these non-through holes. So then I was just kind of run through them all. And like I said, I had two rows of five. And it was just kind of, you know, go through each and every one of them. You know, the dust collector was collecting most of the fine dust, which, you know, I guess is better than nothing. But then I could switch back to that circle cutter. And I set the depth for that as well. The depth was a little bit different than the Forstner bit. Now this center pilot bit was going to go all the way through. I'll address that in a little bit with some tape. But you can see, you know, I don't know. It was a little bit difficult to kind of show this. But 
I'm just making the diameter of that hole just ever so slightly a little bit bigger. And that was you know, the difference. I tried to snag a picture here, and that kind of went over like a pregnant pole vaulter. The, the one on the left here is a little bit wider, the one on the right not so much, but I think you guys get the point. I tried to kind of slow it down here, and you can see just ever so slightly that diameter getting a little bit bigger. Like I said, it was, it was kind of hard to try and show that. So then I ended up with one that had 10 through holes, one that had stopped holes, or little kind of recesses, I guess. Um, if you want, if you're super particular and you want to get the lettering off of the PVC, just wipe it down with a little bit of acetone. Pretty sure studies have shown that that adds at least 5 horsepower to the project. Then comes time to cutting the PVC to length. And a couple things worth noting here, cutting anything cylindrical, whether it's on a miter saw, table saw, band saw, chewing through it with your teeth, whatever you want to do, it's going to want to spin. So you want to be able to get a firm grip, if not clamp it down and take the cut super slow. Also, I wanted repeatability, and so you'd want to install a stop lock, but I was worried that that piece was going to, you know, kind of roll away and then get trapped between the stop block and the blade. So I set my stop block with a scrap piece. That way I could slide my pipe over, remove that tiny little scrap piece, then make my cut. Then my off cut was able to just, you know, if it wanted to roll out of the way, it, it wasn't going to get bound up. It's a lot safer way of doing it this way. So something to keep in mind. And then I ended up with 10 identical length pieces, and, and that was going to be perfect for me. Uh, most of my little stock that I was going to be storing in this was going to be 12 inches long. So I was going to try to epoxy the PVC into the non-through holes, but being that pilot went through, uh, I just laid down some gaff tape. You can use duct tape, whatever you want to use. Um, that way when I pour the epoxy in, it's not going to spill out. And of course, look at this. My very first one, I spill the epoxy. Ugh. Well, I'm not starting over. As much as I wanted to. And then something here I wanted to point out, I was trying to kind of get the epoxy to go into the corners and stuff, and a popsicle stick wasn't doing it. You can see me here reaching for a bin, and underneath my workbench I have all these bins. I have a video on that, I'll leave a link down in the description. But they're kind of my, my go-to things. It wasn't necessarily predictable that I would want an acid brush, and here specifically I have a bin just for glue up. It's got brayers, syringes, uh, acid brushes, and that's what I snagged, and I was able to kind of push the epoxy around and get it all the way to the edges. It's just nice having some of the things that you might need as kind of an emergency thing, because this epoxy was about to set up, and I was able to grab that you know, brush and use it pretty quick. But then I just poured it into each and every one of the holes and just kind of started inserting the PVC. Uh, it went okay. I, it, one of the holes, the epoxy, I don't know if I had maybe too much in the hole, but it kind of spilled up around the edges. Again, these are shop projects. Maybe I'm anal retentive as far as how sometimes things get organized, but... These pieces were just laying around my shop for who knows how long, and it's just, you know, I wanted a kind of a permanent spot. And then I installed the piece of MDF that had the through holes, and I just kind of, I don't know, set that back from the front lip about a half inch, and then I secured that with some hot glue. I was going to come back and, you know, add some epoxy or some other glue in there, but I'm not sure I will because it's, it, that's really just kind of guiding the piece. I don't know, there's not a whole lot of stress on that piece. Then it was just a matter of filling it up with my various tubes. I have the different copper ones. I have solid bar, some threaded rod, brass, all sorts of different, you know, tubular ones. And it, I don't know. It's just one of those things to where for years I've had stuff like this kicking around the shop. And it's, they always seem to get lost. And now at least I will have a permanent home to put them in. Uh, the neat thing is it can go on its side or straight up and down. You essentially could mount it to something. So the options are there as far as, you know, kind of how you want to set it up. But um, I don't know. It, it's one of those things. I don't know if you guys are that particular out in your shops or not. My shop is, I mean, as you saw, my table saw is just covered in stuff right now. But you chomp away at it one tiny little bit at a time. So at least all my little metal pieces will be organized from here on out. Uh, if this is your first time here, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button uh, and let me know. Uh, leave a comment down below if you, if you have any questions as far as any of the parts, pieces, um, tools I used. It wasn't really all that big of a video, so, um, but all that's in the website article, and I'll have a link to the article down in the description below. Uh, and hit that bell notification if you're already a subscriber. That way you'll get notified anytime I release a new video. And also, YouTube has got this new... Uh, members thing so you can become a member of my channel 
If that's something that interests you, I'm going to be doing live, uh, at least to start out with, uh, monthly live shows and kind of Q&A and shop talk and stuff like that. So go over to my, uh, main, my main page on my YouTube channel if that interests you. Well, that's all I have for you for this one. And until I see you guys next time, you guys, take care.